GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling. To seek out new worlds and interesting characters. To boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the GNT show where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high-booted, short-skirted, and big-breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. Badass. It's Radium <laughs> Cup. <Yeah. Bah. laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. <laughs> you know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early. It's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's going to get rough. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with the little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set be. an expectation. Oh, That's the thing about disclaimer. the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news, and I figured this is Terry out. having. Okay. A series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? Straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I G&T. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the G&T Show, episode 143. I'm Terry Lynn. Yeah, fuck y'all. Gettysburg 7. I got nothing pithy about what they're wearing, because they look like slobs today. <laughs> Kabla! <laughs> <laughs> and that was Sori, our resident Klingon. <laughs> good morning, Sori. Good morning, Nick. Uh, I'm happy to be awake. <laughs> we are happy you're, you were able to join us as well. Was it it sounds 20? like he's happy to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what a day. It was just a turnaround trip, wasn't it? It was a party bus. Okay, what? Uh, why fucking at five o'clock in the morning I was in the shower and I'm thinking, why am I up at five o'clock on a Saturday? I yes. and then we got and then I went and met my friend Melanie and we 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 drove down together to uh, to Herndon, Virginia. Got on the party bus. There were about thirty of us that went. When I say party bus, oh dear God! <laughs> I saw pictures. The drinking started at eight a.m. Of course, that's what party buses are for. Oh dear God! It was just fantastical. And we got it, 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 some kind of detour or something, and it took us an extra hour to get to AC. So we got there at like twelve thirty instead of eleven thirty. <laughs> and um, but it was beautiful. It was only seventy degrees, and but the nice. waves, the waves, they were like five foot breakers. Wow. Yeah. Um, I did this slingshot where you sit in like this gyroscope ball, and it slingshots you into the air, and you go from like zero to sixty in no time at all. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was awesome. And, uh, you know, I won four whole dollars. But, Terry, I've got <laughs> yes. points on my, uh, more points on your on Harris my, card. Yay! On my Harris Club, yeah. <laughs> I did not Excellent. realize. So, I, um, I don't know. I may be going back up there to be putting points on my card every now and then. <laughs> you know, it's not a bad idea. To help out for Vegas. Yep. Oh, and we... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> People are... I, look, Atlantic City is very nice. It was my first trip there, believe it or not. Oh, I believe it. it, it it's nice. And I had fun. But, the boardwalk is awesome. The boardwalk yeah. is really cool. Um, how do I say this without offending anybody that works or has a business or anything in Atlantic City? Um, it's like the putt putt golf of Las of, Vegas. Of Las Vegas. <laughs> I totally understand. I don't think yeah. it's like Reno. Reno is the same. Yeah, Reno, and Reno isn't quite as put together as Atlantic City. No, no. Oh, Reno is kind of spread is... out and weird. It's kind of a blocky thing. I'll tell you what was fun though, as we were driving into Atlantic City, feeling like I was on a Monopoly board because of all the street names. <laughs> Because all the all the, the part the spaces right. on Atlantic on, right. uh, 
on Monopoly are, are a lot of people don't know are the streets of Atlantic City. So like I was going down Atlantic Avenue. Yeah, definitely can see why Baltic Avenue is the lower of the uh, yeah is the low rent district. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was the place where there was the peep show booths, and I'm not even joking about that. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. The goat. Why is Lanny putting a picture of a goat being held hostage? It says raise the roof. Hoof. Raise the hoof. Raise the hoof. Oh, raise the hoof. So we were driving home last night. Oh, my God. It's fucking exploding. Um, We were driving home last night, and we saw like about 10 deer. Just on the side of the road because it's oh. up this back road. But the thing is, they weren't like, oh, there's a car coming. I have to run, dear. These were standing in the middle of the road and look at us like, the fuck do you want, dear? This is my road. I was here first. Yeah, because yeah. it's all it was all farmland. And then I said to Melanie, I said, wow, you know, I said, have you seen, uh, you know, what else have you seen back here? Because her father lives back on that road. And we were talking and she's like, oh, yeah, I've seen foxes. And I was like, fox, really? Literally, 30 seconds later, we had to see stop because there was a mama fox and a bunch of cubs oh. crossing the road and they, oh, they run cool. up like the little thing yeah and this one little cub it was so adorable it was like a disney movie he stopped and he looked at us like you don't see me i'm not here and then he turned around and went the other way away from oh. mama and we're both yelling no no go the other way go oh. the other way oh <laughs> Did he finally end up finding Mama? I don't know. We, we drove on because we didn't want Mama to come after us. No, Kush, they were Virginia deer. I'm sorry, Maryland deer. We were on the Maryland side at that point. Um, Busy weekend in Maryland. Yes, and um, she was saying that her father has seen... Uh, yeah, exactly, Laddie. Hey, 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 I'm prancing here. Um, her father's had air going through his backyard and a bobcat. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds like my house. I know. April, waiting for April. <laughs> um, Mike, what about you? I know that... Uh, I had doctor's appointments. <laughs> to say healthcare issues. Um, but I did manage to finish reading uh, Persistence of Memory, uh, or Electric Boogaloo, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I started reading uh, Silent Weapons, or as I'm now going to refer to it as Electric Slide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're, and we were talking before Nick joined us of, of, about persistence of memory, and I was like, you know, talk about a book I didn't anticipate re- liking. I really didn't. I picked a persistence of memory thinking, oh, yeah. I'm not big on Zoom stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I, was very, I was very, very pleased with where it went. And I think a lot of it was just the style in which David Mack wrote it. I really liked seeing it from that perspective, so to speak. So Yeah, now, when I was reading it, I had a couple of major impressions. It was like, okay. So this is the Pinocchio story in reverse. That was my first thought about, you know, about a quarter of the way through. About halfway the way through, it's, it all suddenly became, you know, Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and yeah, so it was it was kind of kind of interesting. Um, I, I really did enjoy it. So if you haven't checked it out, please do. Cool. So, so Matthew Anderson puts this picture up from Back to the Future Two yeah. that says this is how we're supposed to start dressing next, starting next year. Some of us are already dressing that way. I don't saying. know. I think the little sweater with the gold collar and the, I think that's kind of cute. I like the hat. The, the, <laughs> the guy wearing the the the, the, the chest piece. I mean, mm-hmm. look at look at um. Look at Castle. I mean, he's got the, the, the body armor with the black <laughs> on it. I mean, the elements are already in, in place. I mean, it's not and far-fetched. Really, the bicyclists are already wearing that, that kind of goofy hat that Biff is wearing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I don't think it's much of a stretch. It might be just uber fashionable. <laughs> I really say uber. He did, which I'm was kind of cute in its own way. Look at the little pups. And those are talkers. Those are those are those are uh, huskies. Huskies are talkers. I grew up. Oh. We had we had a full sled dog team growing up. Oh my god. And, and they're talkers. They talk. My my my, my father. We we had a champion Siberian husky show dog. Satan. Cool. His name was Satan. It was Satan. No, it was Satan. You mean like the hockey player? No, it was Satan. Speaking <laughs> of hockey players, go Rangers. Yeah, I was bummed that my ducks lost but at Ooh. least the kings you know we're that, watching that that was yeah that was our, that's one of those hockey matches that you just kind of go yeah okay great whoever wins we were we were in the hard rock eating lunch yesterday and they scored those like three goals or two goals in like 10 seconds place was going nuts i bet did you do anything else this week mikey red did you get any writing done um i finished the outline uh for the stone novel 
Um, cool. Oh, that's right. I have it. Haven't read it, but I have it. Um, I fiddled or I started fiddling, fiddling around with the first chapter, um, actually writing it out, but I haven't really gotten much done on it. Other than that, um, played some Stowe, got a few more uh, reputation gear things, and yeah. Cool. Trying to not stay in, or trying to do stuff to not feel pain. Lots of pain, but, you know, hey, I will survive. I'll be. <laughs> okay, then. Oh, I thought you were doing, like, a rhetorical. Oh, dear God. You could God. do rhetorical, too. We go, huh. Morning, Alan. Hello. All right. I think we should just start oh, off. Oh, Terry. Yeah? How adorable was Ella on that Facebook post about, um, it's only because I want to see you in July, but the convention isn't in Albuquerque. Yeah, that was adorable. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> She's a lawyer. So, I... <laughs> Well, very good let's, one. <laughs> let's start off with the big news. Oh, the, fuck, really? I'm already yeah, hung over. Star Trek news? I am so proud to be a talkie geek. We've got our problems with the film, which we'll get into, on our dopey little podcast and nitpick it to death. Star Trek news? So congratulations to the always dreamy David Mack. There's Legos? Oh, yeah. Star Trek news? Yes, the story behind the story. The movie <laughs> that never was made. They got a Klingon! I know! Sold. That's right, I'm gonna throw in a buck the kind rookie guard. That's right, a buck the kind for people. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Star Trek news? Oh, I know. That's why I wanted to get it out of the way. Uh, so it's official. It's official. Roberto Orsi is going to be directing the third Star Trek film. And crickets. As with everything else, let's give it a chance. Yes. We're, we're, that's we're all being, we can do. That's all. We, that's all. We, it's the only choice we have left. It just hey, seriously. More, yeah, exactly. We said about Affleck being cast as Batman, we have to give it a chance. He was good be, though. To be fair, we have to give Orsi a chance to fail. I hope he doesn't, but. <laughs> I think that's what bothers me that I think that's what that we're dealing with right now is that there's I don't want him to fail. I don't want people to think no, that I, don't I want either. him to fail. I don't want him to fail either. I want him to make a movie where we go, fuck, he should have done the first two. Exactly. Yeah. Except for the fact that he wrote the first two. And that's But my then problem. again, you <laughs> I'm you sure got he had his hand writing this one too. Insiders. Yeah. I don't know. The the dynamic certainly has changed. He's now going to be, I think and in my opinion, he's going to be rushed to get this movie out on time. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, kind of unfair. Um, you know, they 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 dragged their feet so long to get a director. But I, I again, I have to wonder why did it take them so long to to get a director? Why is it that nobody wants to touch it? I don't know, but Sensei's image is very disturbing. It's the kitty with the flipping tongue. Yes, it's very disturbing. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I got I got a little nervous when I thought, okay, is my it because the be script really stinks and nobody because... wants to touch it, or? <sighs> Is it that they just couldn't find somebody available, which is also a big possibility. That, that's a very big possibility. Because the big guys are contracted with everybody else, right? And with I the mean, short turnaround, they may not have... Well, everybody else is kind of spoken for now. Yeah. It has been for a while. These guys are on deck for movies five, mm-hmm. ten years down the line now. Yeah. There's no way they can get Nolan. There's no way they can get Snyder. There's no way... That... Oh, Snyder's all wrapped up with DC. Right, exactly. So they can't get anybody who's associated with DC. They can't get anybody who's associated with Sony or Disney. They can't get... They're done. There's nobody left. They have to give a new kid Isn't a shot. that sad? There's only like six directors on a wheel now, right? Yeah. Everybody else is doing art film because that's what they can do. I mean, nobody else wants to do the big, you know, they have... They're, they're just... There's two divisions now in Hollywood. The big $150 million, you know, $200 million blockbusters or you're, or you're making art. It's, yeah. There's... So... It's... it's yeah, it, it. I was just thinking about. I was. I told you about that documentary I watched about John Milius, and to yes. think of all the directors that came up during that time, like all you know, six, seven of them: Spielberg, uh, Scorsese, Milius, all of them that were were coming out of school at the same time. But the problem is now, movies are costing so much to make that yeah. it, it's, it's not like making a taxi driver. You know, I don't know. Uh, Jake Galloway 
cast, why would they give him the director's role? It's a very public role, especially in light of his public outbursts against the fandom. Studios, you know, one thing <laughs> we have to say is studio, oh, he's a quirky. <laughs> studios uh, don't think that they didn't vet this because there is way too much money involved. There's insurance stuff and all of that that's involved. Oh, very true. I mean, this is not like handing your teenager the car keys to the car for the first time. No. This this is this is this is some high shit. This is this is giving them the keys to the fighter jet for the first time. Right. And and it's not something they do lightly. And really, <sighs> is he gonna do any worse than Stuart Barrett fucking up what you know? That was a heinous and and I it had such great bones, you know. Nemesis had such a, a great skeleton that mm-hmm. he just couldn't flush it out. He just couldn't flush it out and decided to show it bare bones. It was bad. Um but yeah, I mean that's a good point. And the argument that I'm hearing from I don't want to say the other side, but kind of like another perspective is that Orsi is the last remaining guy. Let's face it. He and Kurtzman broke up. Lindelhoff left a long time ago, right? He's the one who threw the first hissy fit and said, I'm done. And got all bitchy ass and decided to leave. And oh, he did. And the world yawned. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It was like, yeah, see you later. And so Kurtzman's gone. Lindelhoff was gone. J.J. Abrams is gone. So pretty much all of Bad Robot, with the exception of Orsi, left the project because J.J. started, well, he was the first hissy fit. His first hissy fit was, I can't merchandise my own stuff. Well, it's not your own stuff, you jackass. So off to Disney you go, where you're about to learn, you don't get to own that shit either. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, J.J., if you're going to Disney, the last thing on earth you're going to be able to do is own your own shit. So there you go. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Lanny said, Lanny, yeah? are you talking science fiction? Because Catherine Bigelow has directed a lot bigger movies in the last couple of years that have made far bigger profit. So, are you talking science fiction? Because I'll tell you what, Catherine Bigelow would be very cool to direct Star Trek. Yeah, but I think she's attached. She is. And that's what she's saying. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think that Bigelow is attached, and she can't. And that's the problem. I, women director or not, there aren't a lot out there. And there are, again, I will admit it, Paramount isn't the first one to go out and say, oh, let's break boundaries here and you know, give I, it to a woman. Let, let's give it I don't know how to say this without sounding like a inexperienced, but I don't know how to say this without sounding like a complete and total misogynist, and it's not what I'm intending. So Terry, I hope for for the the fucking it may spark uh, a discussion. Agos out in the world, you can clarify what I mean. (laughs) There's too much money involved for them to do a social experiment and say, "Hey, let's look to fill it with a blank." I don't think you're necessarily wrong. I think in this particular case, and what I was going to get to saying was. If the one thing or C has going for him, it's face it, he's the only one left with experience with the universe that was created. He knows these characters. And he also knows the actors and, and all of that. Right. He's, he's got a familiarity that no other first time director is going to have. So I would say, yeah, you know what? He gets it based on experience. He really does. He gets it based on experience. If you're going to go with a first time director, you're going to go with somebody who knows the product. They had no choice. I really think that this wasn't because they wanted him to do it. I think it's because he was the last best hope. <laughs> Sorry to use the Star, Star Wars. <laughs> so, so, so does this mean that when, that, excuse me, I shouldn't say when, if <laughs> yes, if the fair. film Yes, to be fair, if the if the film does not do well, so yeah. is this the end of the JJ verse? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I really do. But I what think- are we considering not doing well? Because Into Darkness it's- is a good example of that, where it didn't do so well domestically, but internationally right. it cleaned up. Right. I, I, to be honest with you, you know who's going to gonna be make a that money ultimate- loser? It, it has to be a money loser. It has it has to piss off the shareholders. Really, that's what it is. And if because it's a fans, loser, we, we don't matter in that. Right. Um, if it's a loser, shareholders will sell their stock. That's how it works. And we're not talking you and I, mom and pop, stockholders in you know in a in a home kind of. A, we are talking institutional shareholders. Mm-hmm. So people and large groups, the, the the large companies that buy stock in other companies, when they feel like something's going to stinker, they're going to sell their stock. Or those somebody are the people like that Mark, Paramount has. Those are the people that Paramount will pay attention to. Or somebody like a Mark Cuban who may own a, a, a large. Share. Yeah, it would have to be millions and millions yeah. and millions of shares. 
And when you've got one... By the way, he yeah. may be a, a raging dick, but I've become a big fan of Mark Cuban lately just because the guy doesn't give a fuck. Well, there is something to be said for that. I don't know. I just, I think that Orsi, I think he was, I, I really do. I think he was their last choice. I think he was the best thing that they had going. He's the only person who had experience with a product or with the uh, with the verse, the, the JJ verse. Um, and, you know, he's got a ton of TV experience and stuff like that behind him too. Not directing, mind you, but yeah. he's been a producer for a long time. He, yeah, he knows how to navigate the system, which is huge. Right, right. And who's to say that he won't be good? I mean, Jonathan Frakes, his first crack at directing was a Star Trek film. And look um, what it is. The other know? thing going for RC in this, if he's the fan that we've been told he is, and I have no reason to doubt that he's not, especially after some of the things we've heard about things that happened that were out of his control. Mind you. Yeah, go ahead. If he's the fan, he may, he may be outlining something that will blow our socks off to prove us all wrong, too. I hope that is the case. Because if he fucks up this movie, he'll never get a directing job again. Did Stuart Baird, after Nemesis, really get anything? Mm, no. And right. did... who? Who's the one... The, the other two samples that we were talking about that, that took it up the rear this year, too, was uh, Ronan 47. Oh, yeah. He really fucked that up. And what was the other one that did poorly? He was a first-time director, too. Yeah. Is that real? Is that Deadpool thing real? I don't know. I don't see. I don't think so. They're showing baby animals in the chat room, listeners. I'm just saying it's. We're, and then it's Matthew the Anderson puts it all dressed Deadpool. as burritos. Oh my god! All of these things, except for the baby, ba the bunny with the backpack. Yeah. But they're they're animal dressed as burritos. Look at them all. So cute. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that. I think it's going to be an interesting year to follow up on. I hope that Orsi doesn't make the same stupid mistake that, that JJ did. And that was the whole secretive, you know, teaser, misdirection bullshit. You know what? You want to build excitement? Tell us what's going on with your film. Yeah, tell us the truth about your film. Don't lie. Don't misdirect. Don't, you know. Um, we, under yeah, we understand non-disclosure agreements. We get those. Right. But, but the fact of the matter is there's nothing about about this film that we probably wouldn't already know about. If we already know who the cast is going to be. We already know who the characters are going to be. Build excitement. Build excitement by letting us, you know, tease us with the real shit. I'm, I'm, don't, don't be so I'll give you a good example. This week Arrow released that John Barrowman is now a regular cast member. <laughs> See? Again, that's great. It was like the same thing when they, uh, before Castle, when they announced that Eddie McClintock was going to be in the, the season finale. You know, all of a sudden I was like, God, I hadn't watched Castle all, all year, but watching that one episode might be fun. Yeah, don't, uh, give it, don't give us the story. Let us be surprised by that. Thank you. But if you're asked outright, look, is it con? Don't fucking lie to our faces. Would you guys have, have been, I know for me personally, um, I would have been, by the time the movie rolled out, I would have been in a much more accepting mood if I had known that I was going to see their version of con rather than... You know, someone other than, would you guys have... You know what? You're right. I might not have been so put out by it. And not not the least of which is if they had not used the con screen. Mm, I left that that. Really, that that really just soured the whole damn movie for me. And if I had known they were going to do their version of con by going in and still trying to steal from another movie, it just shows how unoriginal they were. It was just... <laughs> Yeah, <sighs> I hope I hope the script is, is better and that uh, the movie does well and that Orsi does a good job directing. I really do. I hope so too. It's gonna be <laughs> now. And what's so sad is that I'm I'm I've got several articles uh, here about the announcement of Orsi becoming the director. And um, none of them are positive, which is really, really sad. Uh, did you share any of the articles? I don't remember seeing any. Okay, well, let's put this one in here first. This one's from the Mary Jane. The Mary Sue. <laughs> Thinking of shoes. This one is from What Culture? And the title of them is 10 Reasons Bob Wars E Directing Star Trek 3 is the Dumbest Decision in the History of the Franchise. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, that's a little unfair. There have been some really dumb decisions in the history of the <laughs> franchise. That's, that's, I, that, God damn it, don't put me in the position to defend, I'm not equipped. I'm don't over. make me defend him, damn it. Entertainment Weekly, 
uh, as they normally do. They don't really, they don't really have a soul. Uh, Entertainment Weekly lost their soul a few weeks, a few years ago, when they just and mm-hmm. and they the person is no longer. They don't even offer their own opinions anymore. They're just like, why Star Trek fans are upset that Roberto Orsi will direct Star Trek Three, <clears throat> and I think that's it for those. And I just thought, wow, it's a. And I do. I kind of feel bad for him in this sen- in in this sense. I don't want him to think that you know what? Yeah, I'm a skeptic. I'm gonna be a skeptic. I'm gonna be a skeptic because he has that history, right? He he wrote the first two damn movies, and all we've done since they came out is dinged him on the shit that he wrote. Fair enough, isn't that what we've done? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's got two other guys, brand new to the genre, brand new to this. Uh, actually, I want to say brand new to the screen too. I want to say they haven't written. They wrote comic books. Right. They haven't written for films before. So it's kind of a is new... It, uh, is it me, or does it seem like they're just thrown in the towel? I mean, the whole thing. I mean, it's just... Well, a lot of people are beginning to say that, but I don't think so. I mean, yeah, it's like, it's really like a Hail Mary pass. They're, they're just hoping and praying that this works. No, but Mike, we're just saying, what about Fresh Blood? And that's what they're doing with these writers. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I said, I hope it works, but I mean, it's like... There's just all of this new stuff. I mean, it's like it's almost it almost seems like they're they're on the verge of desperation. It's well, just like, in a way, that, in a way, they kind of are because they're trying to figure out where they went wrong with the first two films that causes so much, you know, negativity. I mean, films will need to be successful, not just at the box. They're going to need to be successful post box office release. Mm-hmm. They're going to need to be successful in the video market. They're going to need to be successful, big enough to be. Able Able to generate video games that are successful, which Star Trek did not do. As a matter of fact, I think it got panned for being the worst console game released during that year. Uh-huh. Um, it, it needs to be strong enough to generate more than just the film. And we, you and me and, and Nick have been talking about that for years now. And what is it that generates that kind of loyalty from the fandom? I will tell you something that they've done that I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a tad impressed with. Have you seen the Xfinity commercials with Zachary Quinto and Anton Yellen? Yeah, the, the one know, that they yet again find a way to make fun of his accent. Well, I had to laugh when Spock says, uh, what's, what is it that they're saying over and over? What about his voice? Yeah, when Spock says his voice. That made me laugh out loud the first time I saw it. Like you idiot, are you are you having a difficult time? Yeah, I have. I ha- I did. See, I didn't take it like that. I just. I totally it, it, do. I don't know what it is. I'm sensitive because about Terry, stuff like that. Somehow though. you've lost the ability to laugh at those things. <laughs> I have. It, I yeah, really yeah, have. On, I don't like up. making fun of people for their accent. Oh, I think it's mean. Get on, get on the party bus. Loosen up. <laughs> I think it's mean. But oh, I didn't find it mean because. It, but but what my my bigger point was. It, you know, for all of this, this shit, uh, this this crew, this JJ verse has, you know, between the Xbox 360 commercial, um, the Xfinity commercials, all of that, it's gotten back into the mainstream pop culture. Very true, and it has brought a lot of new fans to the original series. Mm-hmm. Which Janice I don't think was on any of us. I'll tell you what, the, I don't think any of us really. I, I don't. I don't think any of us really believe that that would be the ha- what happened. I think that's its biggest success. I Big, agree. Yeah, very much. I agree. I I think most of us thought, oh, it's going to bring a bunch of new fans in. That not unlike Enterprise and what it did to the fandom, it was like, oh, great, another faction of EOS fan or another faction of Star Trek fan. We did. I don't think any of us really quite grasped how how powerfully these people were drawn to the original series and became TOS fans. They're coming to the conventions in TOS uniforms. They're not showing up in JJ uniforms. And maybe that's why well, see <laughs> and maybe that's the ultimate that's the ultimate, you know, thing is the frustration that maybe they had was, oh, they're not buying the merchandise for our movie. They're buying the merchandise for I, Kirk's I don't know. Stuff. I mean when I think of the people wearing the JJ uniforms, the first thing I think of and not a joke is Kush wore it. Um, but there's, there's, I've seen, I, I don't know. I think I've seen, I think, I think oh, I'm trying to think. It seems like it's, um, mm-hmm. I think every year there are definitely are more showing up at the convention. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But yeah. I think because there's, there's more TOS content, I think that is really what, what people are, are appealing to is the idea that, you know, that. Star Trek in general is so, is so rich and full, and there's so much to it. 
you know, they, they, uh, it's kind of like a bait and switch. I mean, JJ brought, brought them in, and then the rest of the, the rest of the track just sucked them all, you know, sucked them all in, or you know, pulled, pulled you know, started, turned up, turned them all over. Well, it's not like JJ's, sense. yeah, and it's not like JJ's fingers are out of this pie. I mean, build a producer, which means he controls the purse strings. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately. And did you see he's already getting shit for, oh my God. Keep moving. He's keep already talking. getting shit for the first picture released of Star Trek 7, I mean, Star Wars 7. Oh, he is? Why? I didn't hear this. It, it was it was a picture released of the, uh, the, the clapboard, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And on there, it tells you what scene it is, what lens they're using, and all of that. Well, they were like, this lens is well known as the lens that's used just for close-ups, not for big sweeping shots. And it, it, it was an artistic kind of shot because there was sand on the uh, on the clapboard. And they were like, great, what Star Wars fans love, more sand. I don't see why that's a big deal. It's got to, you figure Tatooine has to have some Fan, kind of a Fan, connection here. Phantom Menace. Right? People think Phantom Menace. Oh, well, then that's yeah. their problem. Yeah. The whole movie well, started Terry, off in they, a sandy area. Couldn't they say the same? Same thing about Star Trek. That's their damn problem. Just enjoy the movie. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that. I don't. I don't get that. I, let's say if I don't know. The, I, I. I guess maybe if if there was a shot that was leaked. <laughs> If there was a shot that was leaked by Roberto Orsi and it involved some kind of a unit or a device that we knew, Last if, it, time, if there was a shot and it was the outside of the, Guardian, of the Guardian of the Guardian of the Galaxy, you know what I'm talking about? If it involved something that we knew would be time travel based, I think all of us would flip out. <laughs> Don't you think? If, they, if, there was a, if there was a shot. Is it sad that I kind of expect time travel at this point? Do, do you wonder whether or not we're going to get a time travel movie? I don't know. I don't think so. I really don't. I think that I think we're going to get something that's purely. Is Orsi a time travel guy? I don't think so. I don't think no, so. I mean, he's a conspiracy so. theorist, but. Yeah, which I'm okay with. As long as you know what you're getting? I, I'm okay if he can manage to make, like, the Klingon Federation story with some kind of consp- you know what I mean? Well, he already did that. That's what Star Trek in the Darkness was, was the Federation false flag so they could start a war with the, the Klingons. So that's already happened. Done. He got that done. So he got his 9-11 thing out. There we go, Terry. I just put in the chat room about the first picture revealed. I'm sorry. Johnny, I know. I said Galaxy. I apologize. It was well, I, I said the Guardian of the Galaxy and I realized it and I should... I, trust me, I've been kicking myself ever since. Um, yet the, I mean, looking at this first picture from Star Wars, and then thinking back to the first part picture of that we got from Into Darkness, which was what the the dumpsters or the the storage containers. Yeah, that. Oh God, remember how dumb that was? Remember how dumb that was? I was like, are you kidding me? You're posting pictures of dumpsters. Really? How desperately no, yeah. pathetic but are the you? Picture, the picture that they're talking about in the article is the top one. Which with one? The, with the filter, with the sand. Oh, I was talking about the Star Trek one. Remember right. when I know, yeah. that picture? Yeah. I don't know. There's I don't know a, what a, picture a, a you're discussing. Difference. There's a different, definite difference between the two. The, the first photos from the, the two films. I, I would have to agree. I, oh, is this the picture? Oh, you posted. I have to look at this. Hold on. Ooga chaka. Ooga chaka. I know. See, God damn it. Chaka, now I'm all chaka. pissed that I said Guardians I can't of the Galaxy. fight this feeling deep inside of me. Sorry. I love the ads for Guardians of the Galaxy. I have such a, an amazing erection for that movie. All right. So I'm looking at this picture. Dude, mm-hmm. they're in Abu Dhabi. Right. Why is this such a difficult thing for people to handle? Terry. They have yes. their stuff just like we have ours. They don't like sand? I think basically they're sick. They, they feel about sand like we do about time travel. <laughs> well, I, that, and that's what I was saying, is that I, I guess I would have to admit that if there was a leak from Bad Robot about the third film and it involved time travel, I would probably go. Right. And let's well, face I, so, so Phantom Menace, uh, Attack of the Clones, they did have on that that planet. Um, they went back to Tatooine for, for three of course, four, five had Hoth, <laughs> thank God. Return of the Jedi had sand. You know what? They've had a lot of sand in there. They've had a lot of sand. I can understand if Star Wars fans are like, you know, we've been to the beach. <laughs> actually, that's one place they haven't really been, is the actual yeah. beach. <laughs> actually, they, they did in, the, in, in uh, Revenge of the Sith, uh, no, the final movie. There was one Wait a minute. Which final scene movie? of the second trilogy, episode three. Oh, so the first trilogy, but the second trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> the, there, 
uh, the the planet uh, with with the, all the Wookies. There was a beach scene. Sure, it was being invaded. Oh, it was like the, you're right. It was kind of like, like, like Normandy. Like oh, yeah, coastline. that was like a whole three seconds. Yeah. yeah. Good point. <laughs> I, you know what, Mike? I totally forgot about that scene. Yeah, that was that with with uh, with Yoda. And, yeah, yeah, totally yeah, I remember forgot that. Forgot about that scene. It was wow. like coast. It was like coastline. You're right. Yeah. Huh? Okay, faced. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's not like they spent time there. Although they did do, they, I guess, could you consider Nobu with the water and the fucking Jar Jar? I mean, JJ. Uh, the I thought of that water. was a lake. I really didn't get a feel for. I thought it was an ocean was a beach. Or I didn't I didn't get the feel that it was something all that big. I I, I don't know. It just it just seems smaller than than what it, I guess it was supposed. to I thought to. it was the ocean. I I I, I, I fe- it felt like I could see the other side of it. It just yeah. to me it just seemed like you can always see the other side of it. I don't know. Oh, Maybe it's the angle. Girl. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, to move on into the Star Trek news. I thought everybody would really appreciate this. Uh, yeah. eight, an article was posted Sorry. on May 17th at U.S. News, and it outlines a, <laughs> a very cool thing done by Sir Patrick Stewart. He was at the Smithsonian um, uh, revealing, doing the reveal of the new X-Men kind of exhibit they're doing there that a lot of things were donated to the Smithsonian by the X-Men Days of Future Past. So they've got this thing. Well, Sir Patrick grilled the museum director... <laughs> and said, am I right in assuming you have no Star Trek artifacts? None. (laughs) And uh, when he was informed by the museum staffer that the institution doesn't have, in fact, here, have the pointy ears as worn by Leonard Nimoy, Stewart still didn't seem pleased. You have Spock's ears, he said, with mock indignation. I trust they are in a room all by themselves. (laughs) He said that he was going to make it his personal mission to see if there's uh, not something of real significance, not that Leonard Nimoy's ears are not significant, Significant, but at least I can offer you. So Sir Patrick is dinging the Smithsonian that they have X Men shit, but no Star Trek shit. So go, Sir Patrick. Right on. I love that. I wish I could live in a world of I don't give a fuckery like Patrick Stewart does. <laughs> he gets cooler every fucking day, doesn't he? Come I on, mean, he does. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm it. Oh, <laughs> thank God you're home. Look what the cat did. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cute. Um, so yay. Sir Patrick giving the people over at the Smithsonian some grief. I'm loving that. I mean, that's not right. I mean, <laughs> only a pair of ears. I mean, really? Well, they've got the Enterprise model. <laughs> which, which brings to mind. Isn't that in a whole different? I mean, the Smithsonian is like what, twelve buildings or something? Oh, it's enormous. I don't know. I've never been there. Nick, have you been through parts of it? I'm assuming you live close enough. Oh God, yeah. The Air and I mean, Space it, Museum is awesome. That's just. I mean, it's crazy but big. They, they have multiple museums, right? So yes. yes. You'd figure, you know, let's put something Star Trek in all of them. <laughs> in all of them. Uh, let's well, not get a way to do it in all of them. Really? Native Mike? American History Museum? Sure, let's do it. Something Chakotay goes right here. <laughs> no, I was going to say the one where Kirk becomes an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> That's priceless. Um, and kind of speaking of museums, I think this is a perfect segue to talk about, oh, the Hollywood Sci-Fi Museum. You guys want to touch on that at all? <laughs> I love Sunset Hall. Oh, good. It wasn't sorry. me. Oh, sorry. That's cute. That's cute. So uh, do you guys want to touch on that or do you want to just let it lie? Uh, yeah, I'll leave that up to you. Mike? Is there anything noteworthy? about it actually there is i i let's proceed yeah i went i went off in somebody posted in facebook this week about the recent kickstarter for the hollywood the new hollywood sci-fi museum that is being headed up i shall say by houston huddleston who is infamous for his connection for the restoration of the enterprise d bridge and as semi-successful as that was, and I am putting the precursor on that, semi-successful, because the original idea was for him to refurbish the bridge of the Enterprise D and then put it in a place so it could be used by uh, fanfic and fan film producers and whatnot, mm-hmm. that it would be kind of an open source set. And yep. 
open the moment source. that that money I thought you said open sores. Never mind. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> open sores. That got thrown by the wayside after the Kickstarter had been completed, and after he got it to Las Vegas, and he started to become more engrossed with bigger and bigger ideas about where this whole project could go. Not just the bridge, but all of a sudden there was this development of a huge sci-fi museum in Hollywood and on Hollywood Boulevard, no less. Like, like that's cheap. And he started a Kickstarter a couple of weeks ago. I think he's got 20 some odd days left on it to, to raise 84000 And they're pushing 30000 now. Now, for people who aren't reading the Kickstarter, do yourself a favor and read it because it's out there. It's not like he's hiding what this is about. The $84,000 the $84,000 is not for anything in regards to even setting a stone into this museum. All it will do is help him create a business plan. Because he will not be able to go out and ask for grants because this is a now he, he created a nonprofit organization. I, I kid you not, he's created a 501c3. So all of the donations that you make are tax deductible. But the only thing that he's got right now is nothing. All he he's trying to do is create a functional business plan that he can go and make pitches to large corporations and other entities to say, if you donate to me, this is what we want to build. So basically, can I go on Kickstarter and start a Kickstarter thing that says, hey, help me subscribe to porn sites? Because this now people are just doing I would doing say that shit. would be a perfect GoFundMe thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... If people want to support your porn habit, that's up to them. But, it, but it's, I tell why you, why not? He's basically asking for eighty-four thousand dollars to masturbate. Well, he's but I can't say that. I mean, I can't say that. The, I, the one thing that's got because I know so little about how this shit works. That's what I'm going to say. I, he's got. <laughs> if you look at the Kickstarter stage, he's got a board of directors, right? I don't know exactly. how. But Ow. what's it take? Doesn't creating a business plan basically entail sitting down and doing spreadsheets? And well, and it does. It, it does take some budget. But you remember, he he's going to need. For me, just doing a basic draw up of the cost of. Uh, of looking at the photos and and the screen caps and the the computer generated images of what it is that he's trying to develop, he's going to need. Uh, Alan and I sat down. We figured anywhere between ten and thirty million dollars. I love yeah, the fact there's that a you car sat museum down. as part of it. It's like <laughs> anybody it's like, else just love it when Terry says these things, like in, in picturing her and Alan at the table with pencils and slide rules. And, and we do. Oh God, you guys are awesome. <laughs> We do. We sat down and we drew it all up and we Alan's thought, okay, well, the business visor. plan is 80 grand and he's got how much, how much, you tell me how much is just one of those models going to cost to have put in, right? Those models don't exist. It's not like he's going to come out and all of a sudden get the, the 3D model of the Enterprise D. The one that sold at Christie's sold for $500,000. To make them means that you have to hire somebody to make them and these got to be screen quality or better models and he's not looking for like the six foot one he's Time looking they look the like 10 printer. or 12 foot models right i to invest in a 3d printer but you still have to come up with a de design for it right nah. you have to put the design in it, so it's not it, doug drexler being on the board of directors is one thing but it's not like doug drexler is going to do this shit for free <sighs> i'm just saying it's it's gonna be it's Do you realize that 24 hours ago I was model. already trashed? Huh? Do you realize 24 hours ago I was trashed? <laughs> yes. Sorry. I just looked at the time and realized I had had, oh my God, Terry, it was amazing. It was vodka and triple sec and cranberry juice. <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> it was like cough syrup. Well, ew. But tasty cough syrup. Ew. Oh, and you I, mean like Fenergan and coating? Am I coughing? <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, I'm just saying is that one of those models themselves is going to cost upwards probably of a couple hundred grand. And then he's got to get the donations of the costumes and the set pieces. And then he's got to get the donations of the permission to be able to, you know, post this, put, put them up. Then he's got to be able to get the donations just to get the lease of God knows what space is available in Hollywood. And you're probably talking upwards of a hundred, you know, anywhere between 50 and 75 a square foot to lease down there. He wants to build this this huge okay. museum. So now, I mean, the, the Los Angeles Museum of Art, which is building down in the Fairfax district, just had to go through a land swap deal with another. I want to say it was 
it was yeah, it was MoMA. It was uh, the they had to go through a land swap deal just to get. I kid you not, I want to say it was a 50 foot by 200 foot section of land in the Fairfax district, and it was. <laughs> It was somewhere around $20 million just for the land. And that's in the Fairfax district. That's not even in freaking Hollywood. It's I don't even know. What, I see, Terry. Fairfax I don't even know what is that on means. the west side of L.A. It's um, where Farmer's Market is. It's where the L.A. County Museum of Art is, where the La Brea Tar Pits are. Oh, okay. And No, um, I don't know L.A., but and, I, those things I've yeah, heard of. So I and, have a, and, a more and it's, general it's idea. High, that, I have to say, is high-end real estate down there because it's it's right on the edge. Of, it's like that Beverly Hills, Fairfax area. It's, right. And I, it's beautiful. Reason number 77 to love our chat room they're talking about uh, like you and alan doing the yeah. business plans talk dirty to me tell me how overdrawn i am tell me where i can invest <laughs> my big 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 portfolio <laughs> but it's true so i think that when i think what bothers me and i would like somebody to confirm it because i forgot i'm bad but the kickstarter that houston put up again is only for the business plan he needs to get this done if he can get the business plan then that's step one of getting i should say step negative three and then he can get to negative two <laughs> what's it called is it the sci-fi what is it being called again it's like the hollywood sci-fi museum oh okay now there's a big because i was gonna say museum. does it have to be in hollywood where it's so expensive you know what i mean well well, of course not, but this is what because, he wants to do. Like, if he did it, yeah, you know what I'm getting at. Well, there's a big, there's a very successful and a big sci fi museum in Seattle. But what, who's the guy who, Alan? Is, is it the guy's name is Alan, the Microsoft dude? Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he owned like the Seahawks and shit. Yeah. He's the sole, he was the sole funding agent for that. So all because, of the money came from him, and he's just got gross amounts of it. So like, that's adult, why that was so successful. He just did it. He's like, oh, I'm going to build a sci fi museum, and it was done. Like it's, Dulles, it Virginia. Wasn't a huh? Dulles, Virginia here by Dulles Airport. That's where they have the space shuttle and everything for the, the Smithsonian, uh, for the, the air and space portion. You know what I mean? But that's government too, right? So the Smithsonian... Uh, I don't... Yeah, but I'm saying that area. Right, right. Yeah, it's... Exp yeah, no kidding. It, it would be... I'm just saying it's a huge project, people. And if you're going to donate to Houston, understand that you're not... He may want... He may think he's going to get this museum open in 2015, I don't think he's got a shot in hell to get it open by then. I really don't. I mean, this is a year away. A year I away. He's Unless he's not telling us something, that he's got land picked out, the lease available, that there he's got promises of grants that ha won't come into fruition until he's got a business plan. I don't know because he, he and he wouldn't tell us that. You're not going to go out and say, oh, I've got all this money promised. When I, I'm not being a smart ass here. If I were him, I would locate it in the Detroit area. Do you know how inexpensive it is cheap, and, huh? and how many incentives they are giving you know, to and do then, something? You know, if you're going to spend 20 million bucks, spend it on security. I, I'm not being funny. I mean, that they, they are begging people to, to reinvest in that area. And they're, they're giving away land. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm highly skeptical, but I'm hopeful for him. Uh, he has a lot of names that have, mm -hmm. have given him permission to use their names. That's all I know, right? He, this board of directors got Ronald D. Moore, Larry Namachek, some amazing people on it, Doug Drexler, amongst others, and they're all. Larry. They've all Larry. said that they would act as as members of the board. I think it's you know what? Let's look at at this Hollywood Sci-Fi Museum because I am going to give him. Some some shit over this. Uh oh. Everybody buckle in. Who needs a drink? Museum. Hollywood Sci Fi Museum Kickstarter. All right. So his his board of directors uh, he is himself Ronald D. Moore, Rick Sternback, Larry Nemechek, Doug, Doug Drexler, David Gerald, Andrew Probert, and Timothy Earls. Wow. Oh, those not are some one, names. Yeah. But not do one they woman. have any business? Experience? Of course they the do. Oh, Ronald Absolutely. D. Moore? Are you Ronald kidding? Ronald D. Moore does. Rick Sternback does. Larry Nemechek yeah. does. Doug, Doug Drexler, Drexler does. Yeah. David Gerald. Absolutely. These, these, yeah. I, the people he's gotten have been amazing, but not one fucking woman. So Houston, fuck you. Not like there's not wonderful business savvy sci-fi. Well, we don't women. know if he approached them and they didn't want to take part, though. Like it's, it's again, we don't know. You could also say the same. There's no African Americans. And there wasn't. Right. And again, fuck you. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think that I think that the, that you know it was just noticeable. So his now the things that he's showing as a uh, you know the things that you get for a pledge are are fun. I mean you can get a tote bag, you can get coins, you can get autographed photos. 
Um, you can get a lunchbox, uh, t-shirts. These are these are the gifts if you donate. Polo speaking, shirt and hats. Speaking of women in sci-fi, Terry, did you know that Roxanne Dawson directed some of the uh, Agents of Shield? I did. As yeah. did as did Jonathan Frakes. Yeah. yeah. Good 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 directors. I'll tell you. Jake Galloway says Nick has a point, and that is scary for me to admit. You know, fuck you. <laughs> oh no. It was said with love. No, it wasn't. It was. Sinbad I'm hung over, people, the so I'm gonna fight Blu-ray. back today. What is that? What is Oh, a Harryhausen film. Oh. Uh, Firefly, Serenity, Battlestar Galactica. So, yeah. The, uh, now, the one thing that does bother me is that once you start to get into the hundred dollars or more, you're, you're, you're the the prize is going to the Hall of Cars opening, right? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. we're listening. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm trying to figure out what the Hall of Cars is. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so that kind of bothers me. Don't, that to me is vaporware. That to me yeah. is don't, don't promise me tickets to an opening day that might not exist. Yeah. That's where he's going to get his ass in, in trouble. Hall of Cars VIP admission. Battlestar Galactica Day is, uh, includes pre-access to the exhibit. An exhibit which does not exist and may not exist depending on how successful this business plan is. That's where I have an issue is don't, don't make the prizes. Yeah access or membership to the There's museum that, that does not exist. yet exist yeah. and may not yet exist. And that's where he's having the problem. And that's where I have an issue. Drinks with Jane Esp- Espenson. That would be cool. I'll tell you what, if for, uh, I, I, yeah, I'll say it. If he somehow worked it out that if you gave a certain amount and you could be a background crew member on the new Star Trek on the bridge, <laughs> that to me would rock. Yeah. Ser- uh, be dead serious about that. Or like, since Ronald D. Moore, you know, somehow be, you know, just walking down a hallway in uh, Helix or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Bye, Lanny. Bye, Lanny. Uh, love yeah, you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Something um, that exists now that would make me go, fuck, $1,000. All right, it. I'll scrape it together. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, Matthew Anderson put that on the, the picture of the, of the Klingon proverb in there. It mm-hmm. said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, prepare to die. You know, I, I full, I've been burned and I... And I'll tell you, my Star Trek fandom started because I got burned, <laughs> right? It was the whole Tim Brazil FedCon USA thing. <laughs> Talk about a guy who who did not understand. He didn't even give you lube or get you drunk first. Nope, nope, nope. But, you know, thank God for being stranded for three days in Dallas with uh, John Billingsley. That was awesome. Oh, dear God. How did you survive? <laughs> I, was, yeah. I barely survived like that was six so hours. It was so horrible. I barely survived six hours. Thank God his <laughs> wife was there. But it was, it, it's, this just, my antenna went up because again, I, I, I was very, very nervous about what the impetus was for this Kickstarter. Now he is being honest with people in the, in the Kickstarter, as long as they read it, they're going to have to understand that really the funding is for a, a business plan only and not for anything else. So even though you may, uh, have donated a uh, hundred dollars or more and you get a VIP ticket to the opening. The fact of the matter is that ain't happening until there's a museum folks. And he's not going to get a museum until he gets shit tons of money. And he's going to get that shit tons of money. If he can get the business plan off the ground and it's good, he's going to have to show the people who are about to hand over money to him that he's got the wherewithal, the business savvy and the foundation to do it. So keep, keep him, you know, he's, he's got his work cut out for him. I'll tell you, he really does. Uh, oh, so that was it for, uh, oh no, it's not. There's actually some more Star Trek news. Yeah. Uh, How you doing, man? Oh, Black Magnum. Uh, Michael Giacchino, who, who most people will know as the uh, composer for the music of the JJ films, but also for the incredible music in The Incredibles. Um, he's also doing the music for The Planet of the Apes and Jupiter Ascending. Is he, he doing for be, Incredibles too? I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Because that, that soundtrack was fucking great. Yeah. Um, he's going to be making some personal appearances for Star Trek Live in Concert Tour, which will start in Switzerland and and then head over to the UK with showings over at the Royal Albert Hall in London. And then he's going to uh, make appearances. It looks like he's going to try for appearances in uh, Houston and San Diego in July. But I thought that was pretty cool. I love uh, live music performances, and I think it's very cool. So even though he may not be able to make the personal appearances in San Diego or whatnot because he's, he's composing for other films right now, it is his music that will be um, played. So it'll be, yeah. So for Star Trek Live in concert, 
head over to StarTrek.com and read the fun little interview they have with him. And I just adore his work. I think it's great. And I love the soundtrack for Star Trek. I admit it. I did. Oh, that yeah. Great. That was great. I mean, really good that stuff. opening titles in 2009. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I had goosebumps. And, mm-hmm. and then and then it went into the Beastie Boys. Believe it or not, I don't own I don't think I own the movie. I don't own the, I own the soundtrack. I own the soundtrack. Um, the Vorcha and the Enterprise E models were revealed this week for the official Star Trek Starships collection, which is the, the nice little four or five inch models that you can get. It's like the ship of the month club is what I call it. Uh, those were announced Vorcha, this week in the Vorcha. 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 <laughs> Forge. Wait a minute. Oh, that's Klingon. Never mind. I was thinking of a different species. I was thinking, who the hell are the Vorcha? Okay. Oh, the Vorcha class. Yeah, Sorry. no, I was like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, I'll put the link in the chat room. They're wow. pretty. These are great. So hungover. <laughs> that is true. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger, except Australia. Australia will fuck you up. Everything in Australia is trying to kill you. I'm convinced of it. Not Woody. And then uh, finally, Star Trek Woody, Online. Woody's the good one. Woody's the good one in Star Trek Online? I will play Star Trek Online. Engineering here. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. Your crew. Move out. Your destiny. No, what is the good one that we know from Australia? <laughs> Not like uh, there is a featured episode replay event going on at Star Trek Online right now through May 27th, which is a week from Tuesday after this was recorded. And again, it'll be, be that great opportunity for people to jump onto their alts and get those nifty Oph- the Ophidian cane. I love that thing, the one that sucks the life out of your enemy. <laughs> so if you want your Ophidian cane or your... Uh, your Riemann bridge officer. There's also the Shard of Possibilities, which comes with the plane of the 2800, and the Breen bridge officer, which comes around with the Cold War, which is the Breen series. Uh, you can jump into game, and those prizes, or I should say rewards, are now available again. You can also get low buy crystals if you want to go around hunting, and I think you can get like 15 a day, whatever. The summer event's supposed to be coming up, and they usually have uh, stuff that you can spend your low buy on, so it might uh, be worthwhile to save, save yeah, them up for that. That is very, very true, Michael. Thank you for correcting me on that. But, but yeah, and, I'm not too thrilled about it <laughs> by itself, <laughs> but I'm trying to think ahead, you know. It's the, the way that the low buy crystals are given away in the featured episode is that one is hidden in each episode, in each, yeah, in each episode, that's per day. Yeah. And there's 15 episodes. So if you played 15 episodes in a day, you get 15 low buy crystals. Or you could buy, and that's how they're doing this, or you could buy one lockbox yeah. and get anywhere between 4 and 50. I don't know. Well, I, I, I've got um, a thought here. Um, these featured episodes, they're now part of the, the standard, regular, you know, uh, episode uh, progression for for each faction what I mean what makes them special now compared to some of the other missions I mean some of the revamped stuff is as good if not better and why aren't they being included as part of the episode replay I mean, look at the the, the remade um, Doomsday Machine. Well, because those weren't really featured episodes. No, they're not. But they sh- but they're of the same quality. Why aren't they, shouldn't they be? You know, I mean, this, all, basically all we're doing is playing well, one because track those, of yeah. But I think what they're doing is is remember how it's the reward itself that's become available again, and those rewards were special to the series of missions, the episodes, right? So the Cold War mm-hmm. gave you the so there was a special um reward that you could get if you played what really is now just the last episode in the series. So like in, um, what's the one where you get the, it's 15 low buy for one episode per day. 
Okay, Jay Galloway is telling me I'm wrong. So it's 15 lobi for one episode per day. So it, it's an automatic reward. You don't have to search for them anymore. I'll let the 20 seconds pass until answer me in the chat room because I want to make sure you only need to play one episode to get 15 lobi. Well, that's not so bad. If that's really the truth and you don't have to search for them anymore, I can. I, that's a pretty good deal, actually. Because I would tell you, I'd play spin the wheel. <laughs> I, have, I have over 3,000 lobi. <laughs> I, have, I have And I've used 800. them. I've I've actually now. used the low buy to like upgrade stuff like the I forget which oh the the uh, the gem hadar battle armor oh okay yeah stuff like that well the people in the chat room have confirmed for me you do not need to seek them out anymore so that's great news Mike are you happier about that well that that's that's fine but that's not the con- my concern my oh. my concern is why why are, do these these handful of missions why are they getting the all the all the attention when there are other missions that have been revamped that could get the same featured episode treatment you know oh, for instance, I, I think it's the, just the new because, Borg series look at the yeah. new Borg series why not you know add a special one time reward to that and roll it out as a new featured episode series you know and then include it in this replay event you know um, this, that, that's that's the point I'm trying to make is, is you know why limit it to just these four series when there's so much content that's been revamped and is being rolled out and and not getting any attention. I, again, I think it's just as the featured episodes, um, the featured episode series were released as what we now know as the featured episode series, and it was the Breen series, the Reman series, and and it was a series of five, four or five uh, missions that tailed in together and were released on a weekly basis when they came out, and that's what we call the featured episode. So that's and there was a a, a specific reward. When you mm-hmm. finish those at the time, and that's why the, when they say they're doing a featured episode series run, and the, it, Borg, the, the new Borg series that we got with this uh, is never this. was a featured episode. It was but just part of the story. Worth, isn't it worthy of being a, a featured episode series? I think it is. I think the, the, this new content, the way that it, it flows, why not add a one-time reward for, and then release it? They should. What they should have done is released it as a featured episode. Yeah, Said, hey, we, we pulled it down. We're going to revamp it. What we're, when, we, when we do, we're going to release it in the same style, the same you know hoopla, give it the same attention as the featured episode series. And when but, we do the replay events, we're going to treat it exactly the same. Right, but the featured episodes that have uh, there are other featured episodes, but those featured episodes are not part of this new replay event. And those are the featured episodes that are singular, like Darkness Before the Dawn and Temporal Ambassador. These are the ones that started, a, instead of doing a series of five featured episodes, they did one. Mm-hmm. And it was Darkness Before the Dawn, Temporal Ambassador, and Sphere of Influence. All of those are considered to be featured episodes because that's how they were released. Are but they're canon? just not part of this replay event. But are they canon? And, and the <laughs> Temporal Ambassador did have a one-time unique reward, so why not include that in here? Roll what it was out, it? Roll it out with, that, with that special ship. Isn't it still part of it? When you play Temporal Ambassador now, is that not part of it? Doesn't it still come with the ship? Oh, does I think it? it does. Oh. I well. think it does. I, and I, yeah. I, and I think Sphere of Influence does as well. And that's why I'm like, the reason why they're not part of it is because that special reward was never removed. Get the ship. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> they're missing an opportunity is all I'm trying I, to say. I don't out. disagree. I, to be honest with you, I like your idea of, of especially of the Borg, one, of the Borg revamp, mm-hmm. to have them kind of package them and say, hey, if you play all three, you get this nifty reward. I'd like that. It'd be fun. But the nifty reward at the end of that, to be honest with you, I loved those episodes. I thought, wow, I actually like playing the Borg now. In those episodes, at least. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, they've been revamping and doing all this stuff to all these old missions, creating more coherent series type of of, of, of stuff. I think it would, it, it, it would be great to see them go back and say, okay, let's create replay events type type scenarios for each of them you know um so here's the borg series push let let people know that it's been revamped let encourage them to go and replay it and see all the new uh, new highs and lows i have to admit i was really kind of surprised at how 
I mean, I did not know they revamped the Borg missions until Al told us in his interview. Exactly. And I was like, what? Since why didn't you just? I know. I I went the next day and fucking played them. And loved them. Yeah. They loved them. And, and it's like, no one knows. No and, one knew. And it's, like, and it's like, you know, it, this needs attention. Hold on. Hold on. Was it in yes. the release notes? Because Probably, I don't believe who reads yeah. that blog. It was. It was. Ah, it was. So but you... it should have been touted. It really should have been marketed as part of season nine is a fantastic new revamp of the, you know, yes. it should have had its own blog. Just, and, no, just, and, just and, say, and, hey, you know, it should have been its own featured episode series. It, and say, it, hey, it's we, basically we like, this. It's basically like remastering for a Blu-ray. You know what I mean? They they should have yeah. It should have been uh, at least on Twitter and and Facebook saying, "Hey, we did this. Go check it out. There's changes." I I was, and, I was remarkably surprised, which made the episodes it. really stronger to play. Oh, they're great, and it's they're like so there's good. no attention to them. I mean, I don't think any. I don't, I don't think there are. I think there are very few people who've actually gone through and play them and they are so deserving yeah and Sunsail has another good point you know no one really knows how to get the kit modules now the new kit system you know, says, unless you're playing the remastered assimilated which wouldn't again, that be a great reward I mean I gotta be honest I have no idea how to use that kit module oh my god Cushman Zada just put in the chat room we're on season 9 how long have I been out oh honey <laughs> uh, yeah you must have because season, oh. season 9 has been out for over a month honey. oh a week uh, and welcome to Blue Dragon. Um, the, the, yeah, no, it's been a little disappointing to see how odd the marketing team kind of, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's just, and, and I don't want to diss Trevor because he's been so good and he's, he's a great community manager, but I don't know what happened after Brandon left that there seems to now be kind of almost a fallout or a falling out of marketing yeah. on, on Star Trek online. And I'm wondering, what is up with that? If It's not that this is a budgetary issue. It's more of an informational issue. And I can tell you, you know, and I have to admit, maybe... Communication, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, it's not like they get the news out to Joystick or Massively or Kotaku or anything like that anymore. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. So it's been... Oh, speaking of Massively... Yes? Terry. <laughs> Terry has a new contest. I do. You guys head on over to the G and T show, and you hit on the, and you get into our forums. There's the link. Yay! Thank you. Um, I'm holding a contest for naming my new column. I'm going to be doing a new column. In the, no, it won't be it massively because massively is just news, news, news. Now there's no more. There's no more in-depth columns like they used to have. It's just news. Um, and I decided, you know, I'm going to pick back up. I've I've given myself a nice enough break, and it's and it's been so nice. I've been off to work and, and do columns at multiple other sites. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate those offers. They came in from Hollow Suite. They came in from, um, you know, I want to say I got 10 offers, maybe nine, nine or 10 offers. And I thought it was very, very kind of them. And I thought, you know what? I want to take a break. I want to see what it, I just want to breathe. Now I want to live a couple of months without a deadline. That would be great. And that's when yeah. I sat down. I thought, I miss writing about Star Trek Online. I miss writing about Trek and being able to rant. <sighs> I'm what? sorry. Jay Galloway says season nine dev blog sixteen, and there's a live stream. Yes, it's in the dev blog. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about marketing. The dev blog is not marketing. Big it, difference. Yeah, it it wasn't. I'll I'll tell you, Dave. It was a surprise when all three of us are talking to Al Rivera in an interview, and it's sad when all three of us were shocked by what he said. We were like, "What? It, uh, ex- what? It was really that bad." Go back and listen mm-hmm. to it. Um, and, and Al even admitted that people didn't know it was out yes, there. Yes, he did. He, he totally said did. it. Yeah. Um, he said a lot of people don't know about this, but and it's like what? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, it was really sad actually. It, um, it needs to be marketed. Put it on the front page when you log on to Stowe. Jeez. A new revamped. Yeah. The featured episode treatment. That's really what it needed. What it needs. Give it the Agreed. featured episode. Uh, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no you're, you're right. You're squirrely, right. squirrelies. We do it. Know how it is. It's the GNT show. Um, so it, I'm looking for a name for my new column, which I'm going to put at the GNT show. I'm going to start writing. And why not? It's my. If I'm not going to get paid for something, <laughs> I'm going to get not paid for it at my own site. <laughs> yep. 
So I'm, um, so I need a name. The, the fact of the matter is, is I sat down and I was going to write the words, the captain's log. And I thought, fuck that. Everything's a captain's log. I don't want to do a captain's log again. Everybody does a captain's log. I'm done with it. I, I don't still say do... the fan dance with Terry. I like that. The fan dance was pretty fun. So I'm looking for a new name for my column. So if you guys head over to the, the forum and you post in the forums and you give me a name, I'll pick the, the best one at the end of the month and whoever wins gets a $25 gift card to Amazon. There you go. Easy. Right on. Awesome. We're excited. I'm excited anyways. <laughs> yes. And it can't be Caspian specific because it's not just going to be about Star Trek Online. I'm going to be, I wanted to be able to vent. There was, you know what triggered the whole damn thing? Was me sitting there and thinking about, I really would like to write about the Hollywood Sci-Fi Museum. <laughs> How about Terry's temper tantrums? <laughs> <laughs> Terry's temper tantrums might work. Mm-hmm. It might work indeed. So it's head over if you want a chance at a, a nice gift and so you can buy a couple of Star Trek books, you know, just saying. Um, head over to uh, the forum, sign in. And unlike my friend Tyler Edwards, who refuses to, to log or register for the forums for fear of fan mail. No, I don't do that. I, I was, do, I, do I get any? I don't know. Th- I was like, oh, okay, whatever, Tyler. You don't get to win. So there. Wait a minute. Spam mail from our forum? Yeah, that's what he was afraid of. What the fuck? I don't know. No, I don't, that's too much work for me. No. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> that actually requires effort on my so part. So it's very uh-huh. important for us to remind everybody <laughs> if they register, you don't get spam mail from us. Why? Because we're too fucking lazy. <laughs> 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 there you go. Oh, uh, yeah. So head on over. Give me, help me, help me pick a name. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Tired Nick is tired. Yeah, tired Nick is tired. He's hung over Nick is hung over. <laughs> Terry. Yes. Do you want to do convention or do you want to do ask date? I want to ask date. All right. Did you see who's here? No. Our special guest this week, none other than the man, the myth, the legend, author extraordinaire, just ask him, Dayton Ward. Up in here, up in here. He's delicious. <laughs> the man is a sage. Dayton Ward is here. Hi, Dayton. Hello, Dayton. Hello, Newman. Mark just handed him his complimentary gin and tonic for the G&T show, so that's oh, always good. Oh, that's good. Firefly Vodka. See, if we knew he was coming, we would have taken him to the green room with the green women. God damn it, go read the ass, Dayton. Oh, Dayton. Dayton. Dayton Ward is grumpy cat. <laughs> Dayton Ward, troller of trolls. He's such a diva. Pay attention, Ask Dayton fans. Everybody got their pad and pencil ready? Yes, I'm ready. Would you like to be a part of the Ask Dayton experience? Send your questions to hosts at gntshow.com. Be 30. Uh, Ask Dayton, number 98. Dear Dayton, did you grow up playing home video game systems from Atari 2600 forward? If so, what systems did you have and what were your favorite games? What games did you drop quarter after quarter into at the arcade? Please share your gaming memories with us, your devoted fans. Thank you, Dayton. Oh, Terry, how much money did you drop in at the arcade? Rolls and rolls and uncountable, innumerable See, we were of rolls. the age when it wasn't even tokens. It was, it was quarters. quarters. And we played at Bobo's. Bobo's and, Arcade. And, and, and fucking dad yelling at me, No! Stop with the fucking quarters! <laughs> and and uh, we also played at golf and stuff. And if anybody knows what I think it was the Karate Kid may have used. Oh, like pu- is that where the, with the go-karts and everything? Yeah, that's that was about uh, two miles from my home. Did you have to home. catch flies? <laughs> no. Oh. But that's where that was filmed. That's the other arcade. So we either went to Bobo's, which was closer to my house, but it was also small. So if it was full, we had to go all the way over to golf and stuff. Golf and stuff. They golf really put a lot of time into that title. It was crazy. God, the 80s rolled. <laughs> Dayton's answer. I'm sure there's at least one person out there who's hearing or reading this and thinking, great, Dayton's just going to use this as yet another opportunity to shamelessly throw that picture of his Star Trek arcade game in all our faces in a bid to make us seethe with jealousy. That well, you're so- right. I am. Here it comes, the boom, y'all. <laughs> and then he's got a picture of him with his daughter playing the arcade game. I love that photo. I know. I hate him for having that. I am so jealous. It's true. Now, we've discussed my gaming habits before, but that was way, way back in February 2013. I know. It was like eternity and a half ago, right? Now, a lesser question taker might simply point you to that earlier response and send you on your way. But we try to go the extra mile for the G&T show audience. Besides 
besides, this question is different enough from the original that it leaves us some wiggle room. So let's see what happens. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. This is where I picture Dayton picking up the bottle of vodka, taking a drink, then sitting back down and staring at the screen. As you surmised in your question, the Atari 2600 was my introduction to home video game systems, though it wasn't even called that back in the day. Much like Episode 4 was simply Star Wars at the time <laughs> of its initial release, the 2600 was known by the rather unsexy moniker Atari Video Computer System, or VCS for short. In retrospect, that abbreviation makes it sound like a, a lot like a disease you might catch after banging an Okinawan hooker on some whisper alley, whisper alley whorehouse without proper arm protection and inoculation. And no, I don't speak from experience on the latter topic. You know if I was lying about that because my dick would have dropped off back in the 1980s, and my wife would have married that guy she met in college who probably would have ended up with, who probably ended up as a used car salesman in Fort Lauderdale. Anyway, back in those days, most of the Atari games I, I enjoyed were versions of the games I was playing at the arcades, Tron, Asteroids, Defender, Battlezone, and so on. They were fun to play with friends when you were stuck in the house on a rainy day, but the real action, of course, was at the arcades. It wasn't until I got the state-of-the-art home game computer system, the Commodore 64, <laughs> that I started to get serious about home gaming. When I wasn't trying to crack NORAD's network and engage the Whopper in a friendly game of thermonuclear war, I was playing the C64 version of the Star Trek Strategic Operations Simulator, among other things. Get this, the graphics in this version actually were better than the original arcade game. So that brings wow. us to the, those meccas of 1980s teen frivolity. The arcade. By Flynn's Avenue. Avatar, I've never even attempted to tally up the sheer number of quarters I deposited into however many games were to be found in who knows how many arcades scattered across Tampa in the early 1980s. I'm pretty sure the total dollar amount would have to rival, if not surpass, the gross national product of most third world countries combined. Tron, <laughs> Star Trek, Gyrus, Spy Hunter, Tempest, Star Tempest. Wars. I loved Tempest. Star Wars. The list goes on forever. Oh my god, Tron was so awesome with the light cycles. But anyway. Oh shit. It's true. And you didn't you couldn't cross each other's Oh. Oh yeah, don't cross the streams. Don't cross the streams. When I was stationed overseas in the late nineteen eighties, one of the things we would do is head into town on Okinawa and find these massive multi-floor arcades where everything was devoted to a single game manufacturer. Sega, Konami, Namco, and so on. Each one showcasing their latest and greatest in arcade awesomeness. We were playing games there that wouldn't even make it to the States for a year or more. Holy shit, but did I drop some serious yen in those places. Wow. My favorite from the Golden Age are still Tron and its sequel, Discs of Tron, yeah. Star Trek, and Gyrus. Yes, I still have the Trek game in my home office office and acquiring decent models of at least one of the others is still on my bucket list. You know, for those of you looking to knock out a bit of early birthday or Christmas shopping or something. I just came across something that made me all think. Cool. Tron, is that what is it? it? Huh? Did you see it? Oh, no. I have to. It's, I guess that Xbox has uh, all of the Intellivision games. Really? <laughs> But I don't have an Xbox. I have PS3. I have Xbox. <laughs> that was ours. That was our first. Uh, you system. know what game I used to play on the Intellivision? Like for hours and hours on end? The 17 Bomber. Oh, yeah. No, we, that we was played on a, Target. We played a lot Dude of baseball and a lot of hockey. Dude had a southern accent in the game. He had a <laughs> southern accent. That was on Target. Oh, my well, God. Pitfall. Pitfall, yeah. You remember that with the alligators? Yes, and going across the pits, which is why. It's it's pitfall. Yeah. <laughs> um, Speaking of video games, you, did you guys? Thank you, Dayton. Did, did you guys notice on eBay there's a um, Star Trek pinball machine? Yes. So Dayton had responded to my post after I had found it that uh, if anyone is looking for a, a birthday gift for him. <laughs> uh, what perfect. was the one where you rode like big ostrich? Joust. Remember Joust? Oh, You rode the wow. big ostriches? <laughs> oh, I was, the I was just a big Vision. television fan. I huh? loved my ColecoVision. ColecoVision was one. We... The most painful controller ever. We had a Pong game, but after Pong, my dad didn't buy another game system because we were again. It wasn't. It wasn't too difficult. All he had to do was give us a roll of quarters, and we were gone to Bobo's. Mm -hmm. um, By the way, my arcade was at the bowling alleys where I met. Yeah, Janice. yeah. I mean, that's where I met Janice. 
cool. I was playing Ms. Pac-Man, and I'm going to say it, and she's going to make a face. Bitch, wouldn't leave me alone. She kept talking to me and screwed up my game, and now 30 <laughs> years later, she tells me she did it on purpose. That's awesome. To get my attention. Oh, there's Joust. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Dropping the That's eggs. That's so great. Oh, my God. You know, I'm just saying. And I then there was this... one where you were flying a fighter jet, and you were, like, bombing docks and stuff, but you were flying over a video. So you had an animated plane. Right. That was flying over video, and that was like when that one hit the bullet alley. Shit, stop! Because it was like, what is this? Yeah. I really wasn't allowed to play arcade games. That's a shocker, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it I was either that, that or, or another rental of uh, what was it, Ultraman, for like the ten thousandth time. Dude, don't I, mock an Ultraman. I'm Wait not. We wore that videotape out. We had to buy like three copies for the video store. Because we yeah. went through it so much. <laughs> the um, afterburner is that yeah. it all? The one where you were bombing the. But I remember See, for playing us, Pac-Man. Yeah, and and of course Mario was big when Nintendo came out. Of course, that's when everything for me changed because I became and we became a Nintendo family. We had mm-hmm. every system that N- Nintendo ever put out. So we had the I Nintendo system. Genesis. We had Super Nintendo. We had all of that. So we we played a lot of Mario. We played uh, one of the big ones was Blades of Steel. Oh you know yeah. That? Oh yeah. But I loved my Sega Genesis. Yeah. That had and, a good football game on it. You know, uh, I think it was Fritz who lived down the street from us who had the Sega Genesis. And that was the one thing is that our neighborhood, we almost did it on purpose where we had the Nintendo game. And like the, the then uh, Dennis, who lived behind us, he had the the, the ColecoVision. It, everybody had a different system. Right. And you just, you just rotated through everybody. Yeah, I was going to say, each day after school is a different house. Yeah. And what then, was the game? then when then when it got dark, that's when you went to Bobo's. Yeah, because oh. it was the only place to hang that it was legal to. And what really. was the game? What was the candy? The Red Hots, but they weren't Red Hot, but they were like gummy type. But they were like, I remember that? Oh man, there was a candy I used to eat constantly. But um, <laughs> shocker, I know. But there was a game. Oh 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 oh, what is it? Um, we still have our GameCube. I want to say we just gave away the SNES to somebody. What was the fucking we have football the game where you could, oh it was like one of the earliest it was one of the earliest ones but it was, yeah, it was so, before the madden thing yeah it was before Madden, but you could be like johnny unitas that's cool oh yeah i was a big uh, when we went to bobo's it was either i played Red Hot Dollars. thank you paul yeah i played pac-man or i played um tempest or i played frogger i like frogger was oh frogger yeah frogger for me frogger wasn't so bad because it was one of those that you could play and still talk to your friends and Dig Dug. Dig Dug was like that, too. <laughs> um, I was Tech Mobile, because she's a man. Tech Mobile. Wow. Oh, Chris and Matt used to play that all the time. Yeah. And the quarterback's throwing motion ones. was like the arm just going in a circle. <laughs> and you could play, like, is... the Colts, like the, the 60-something Colts against... Yeah, it was so much fun. I used to love, absolutely love baseball stars for my yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like the baseball games. We like the hockey games. You know, we we and then Zelda, of course. That was it. Done. I was done, and that's when I became an observer and not a player, as Alan would so probably <laughs> easily say. I love Zelda. I love Zelda. I love Zelda. I can't play it for shit. I have absolutely no hand-eye coordination when it comes to console gaming at all. No. And I know I never could. I could never play the Super Nintendo system. I could never play it. I just don't have. Well, that's it interesting you say that because for more who want to see about these old games go to geek and sundry on uh youtube and watch co-optitude where felicia and ryan day brother and sister play all these old games that they never had oh, a chance yeah. to growing up so now that they they're in a place to, to you know to get them they play them and it is hilarious now nsfw there is some really good cursing that goes on during these games but right. felicia day is of course course Felicia Day yeah. so by default automatically adorable and Ryan Day is hilarious there it is Paul red hot dollars that's the shit oh yeah <laughs> sorry but yeah go to co-optitude uh, on you the know, and sundry it, channel this whole it's so funny is because this whole conversation totally reminds me of why I fell in love with um uh what's oh my god my my brain just went <sighs> 
which is very funny because that comes straight out of the movie I'm about to talk about. Was um, uh, The Last versus, Starfighter? No, versus the world. Come on. Um, oh, Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's part of the reason why I find almost perfection in that movie because <laughs> it speaks to the kids today think, oh, that was made for us. You know what? Bullshit. That was made for my child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that movie mm-hmm. was not made for today's kids. That movie was made for anybody who understood gaming or, from or the 80s on up. Pretty much like any John Cusack movie is made for our generation. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's why I find so much perfection in the movie, even though it's that quirky kind of, you know, really crosses over into that surreal thing where every time he kills somebody, he gets points, he gets points for it, which just cracks me up. It was... Oh. Uh, Gaming in the now and after. Yeah, I feel bad too. that kids today don't. Fine, how old do I sound? Don't have the arcade experience like we had. Right. Yeah. Because it, that it was, was the only place to go. Awesome. Because yeah, after you turned twelve years old, there was nothing to do. Right. Mm-hmm. It, 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 you got to play with your friends, and then when you turned twelve, it was no longer cool to go out and play. You know, have your imaginary friend, have your imagination. We play, still right? did though. You know, I'm gonna say my friend, we did. Uh huh. Of course, we were the outcasts. Right. But we still did like stories and stuff in the woods, yeah. but yeah. we also were able to go to the arcade and do all of that. So it was like that. Oh God, those things make me sick. Wacky wafers. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, had the bowling league after school on Wednesdays. We, I, it, and for me, it was a little bit different too, but just because I uh, went to Catholic school and oh, our good neighborhood. Point. Mer- Medwolf says the arcade was the bar scene for young kids. Exactly. That's what I meant to say. Totally. Is that it was the place you could go without getting in trouble. It was legal for you to do so. Everybody you didn't have to worry. knows your name. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And and you know what? It was funny is that at least at least for us, there was one jerk who always hung out in the back of the the arcade behind the door, like the. the and I want to say it's a back alley because it wasn't an alley, but he hung out back there, and that's where he smoked his cigarettes. And if you wanted to be gross, you went out and back with him and smoked cigarettes, and everybody's like, ew, I remember. Um, and there was always that one kid who was like the king of that arcade yes and everybody gathered around to watch him play whatever game he was the, the master of right oh. and i want to say and i want to say for him it was tempest because he could spin that sucker around oh, i had really? never seen anybody level that up like he could uh yeah that was <laughs> the candy cigarettes we there were some great memories about those arcades and again for us it was just a really you know it was a place where you could go and at least your parents knew where you were mm-hmm. and, and times were different too i'll i'll grant you that I walked to Bobo's, which was probably a mile and a half down the road from the house. And at night, mm-hmm. you know, my, my curfew, my curfew was 10 o'clock at 13 years old. And I walked home. <laughs> I'll tell we you, walked I'll, home. But, you you but didn't you know, have to worry. Having yeah. said this about all these games, do you know what I was always the biggest fan of? I love me a good pinball. Pinball was fun. And I our, spent so much of my is quarters Alan still in, in the pinball. Room? Is, is Kajiro still in the room? I don't know if he is or not. Our friend Jim, we had a he had a cabin up in uh, Crestline, and we used to go up there all the time, and he had a pinball machine that was like Knights of Arabia or something like that. It was always really fun. And uh, the pinball machines always used to tie in to like the big movies that were coming out so you had like the back to the future pinball machine yeah i'll tell yeah. you what one i loved and this was like in 90 the adams family pinball machine i wow. spent so much money in that game um, oh good good squirrel excellent squirrel thank you yeah Dayton. great yeah Dayton. that was fun that was fun so terry convention yes. news i have convention news you do i do shall we just start right off the bat with a um, las vegas update are, is, are we still talking vegas right uh, we are, are we oh vegas? yes you're coming to vegas right start Trek Las Vegas may take place every August, but on this show. This is where we hang out the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the crew has been fatigued now from so many months in space, and they need to take a break. The landing party has been down to check out the terrain while the crew gets ready to play. They say there's only plant life living on this lovely rock, but a road 
Go for it. So this week, plane ticket to Albuquerque, yes. check. Yay. Hotel room in the Masquerade Tower, check. Plane ticket back home, check. Excellent. Right on. And Weird. Janice also has her plane tickets, too. <laughs> I, I want to point say, that out. And I hope that's for both of you. I no, 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 I'm not bringing her. Yes, of course. <laughs> for, like, a bunch of people would kick my ass if she didn't come. Well, we do have a few new announcements of uh, guests that have signed on. And the good news is Terry Farrell will be one of them. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jadzia Dax is going to be there, folks, which is great. Uh, we have some others as well. We're all, all the way down. By the way, there's 85 people that have been signed up, that have been signed. Excellent. Don't forget, Ghibli Brown, Jane Taylor, and, and, and Enterprises The Forgotten will be at the G&T booth on Friday and Saturday. Uh, they'll be signing her autograph for a nominal fee there. And also talking about her role and Star Trek Continues. Let's see. We have new announcement. Roger Lay, a Saturn Award-winning producer whose credits include HBO Think Films 95 Miles to Go, starring Ray Romano, um, as well as the sci-fi feature Chrysalis, based on the short story by acclaimed author Ray Bradbury and honored with the Best Feature Award at the International Horror and Science Fiction Film Festival. He's um, also responsible for the, the producer or director of the reunification, or 25 years after Star Trek The Next Generation, as well as multiple other specials for CBS Home Entertainment, including Star Trek Enterprise, First Crew, Wolf Lake, uh, the original Werewolf Saga, and Kindred, the Embraced, Last Will and Testament. He will be moderating a number of panels at this year's convention, which is kind of new for creation. Usually it's That's Adam. Cool. So it's uh, good news for, for that. that uh, Wasn't there controversy doing? about Adam moderating last year? Well, he, 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 has, a, he has a history of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he has a history of, of, of forgetting that he's on stage, I guess you think. And I'm trying to about I'm trying to be pol- yeah. Tanya Lamani, who played Bra in TOS's Wolf in the Fold, she will be there. Oh, Com- you know, that's the episode I'm up to in uh These Are the Voyages Toss season two. Oh, very cool. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which we've gotta get <laughs> We, we yes, have let's this explain of, to people what happened again. <laughs> again, we have this history of, of setting uh, uh, interview times with Mark Cushman to talk to him about these are the voyages. And unfortunately, they, they just never seem to work out initially. Mark, <laughs> Mark writing about a, a show that prided itself on its science and technology and everything. And Mike, why don't you take it from there? <laughs> what? I was talking with Paul in the chat room. Uh, uh, we, were I just, said Mark, we were dizzy Mark, Mark, Mark Cushman for me needing to learn how to work Skype. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he had he had mentioned before that he had he has some, some issue some difficulty with it. Uh, we worked <laughs> with him before, and uh, his secretary assured me that next time she will be present <laughs> to Yay. make sure that. He- he gets he, it on there. That's he great. gets online. It's just it's a cute history that we have with him, and we we adore him anyway. Um, the next person who's uh, showing up and has signed is Camille Saviola. And for those who do not know or recognize the name, if you've watched Deep Space Nine, you'll remember her as Kai Opaka. Oh, cool. oh, I loved Kai Opaka. I did too. I'm very excited. So she's going to be in the vendors room on Saturday and Sunday, and she'll that be doing be photo ops <gasps> on Sunday. Oh, but, look what Mad Wolf put in the chat room. I didn't see him. The Adams Family pinball machine. Wow, I remember that one. Yes. Wow, I do remember that one. It was That's so much cool. fun, and it would have. Um, uh, 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 By the uh, way, to our listeners, we're talking about the Adams Family pinball machine again. It would have. Uh, uh, oh fuck! Uh, Gomez yelling, "Are we go?" When you did like the <laughs> multi ball and stuff, and yeah, and thing would come, the hand would come out and take your 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 ball because it had a magnet on the end of it and then you you like land in one of the things and if you rang oh. <sighs> if I ever get date and FU money, I'm getting that pinball machine. Cool. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, da, da, da. The last, the next person who signed on is Ron Jones. Ron Jones is a composer. Yeah. So it's kind of nice that we're good. getting. Yeah, it's kind of nice that we're getting people who were involved with Star Trek in other ways. And he did many of the episodes for Star Trek: The Next Generation, and as well as, oddly enough, Star Trek video game. And it says more recently, Ron has worked on uh, Ducktales, although that was 
wasn't that recently. And then, uh, but more recently, Seth MacFarlane's hit animated shows Family Guy and American Dad. So I'd love says. to ask him, and, and is he going to be in the main hall or the the, 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 the Forrest Kelly? Kelly? It says here oh. he'll be appearing Saturday, will meet fans and sign autographs as his schedule permits, but he will also conduct music from Star Trek The Next Generation as part of, as part of our Saturday night concert gala with the Nevada Pops. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Nice. I would love to ask him about the difference in the music for the video games from, you know, TV, film. Yeah, that would be interesting. Be very because interesting. Because our, our good friend, um, Brett, Clu- 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 how do you Clu-Slaw. say it? Yeah. Thank- Sorry, Brett. I'm hungover. I've got hungover talk. Um, we play song pop against each other, and that some bitch did music from video games. <gasps> well, it's got a lot of hit music from, like, GTA and all of those, but it also had, like, when it's like the... I have yep. no fucking clue. <laughs> It'll be interesting to be able to, to meet with him and to speak with him. I'm excited. Uh, for our listeners, uh, I have, how do I say this? We're under embargo for a certain type of news. And since we're under embargo for a certain type of news, what I will say is do yourself a favor and monitor and watch over at trekmovie.com um, in a couple of weeks. They're going to be making a very fun announcement about the convention. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. In <laughs> other words, Terry just said, we know something you don't, so go fuck yourself. Pretty much. Yeah. We know something you don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, I have to put it in listener speak. What was that? I have to put it in listener speak. So, yeah, we, we, we're not allowed to talk about what it is, but I can tell you, if you want to know what it is, trekmovie.com is going to be the people who will tell you. It'll be a couple of weeks. Still a couple of weeks away. Oh, so we're going to be teasing and talking. Cannot wait. We're going to be teasing wait. and taunting you. It's going to be a blast. Oh, okay. Oh, Megan so. Massacre, why do you have to exist? Sorry. Um, well, uh, speaking of, of the con, um, yes. a little bit. Did you say the con? Me. Yes, the con. Oh, I thought you said something else and my heart stopped. I was like, Michael! Okay. No. A little bird told me that there's a possibility that Five Year Mission may be attending the convention. <laughs> Maybe not in an official capacity, but prob- probably unofficially. Shut up. That would be so cool. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh, and real quick before we start to wrap up. God bless you, uh, Michelle Sprecht and the people from Star Trek Continues who are putting, and James Kerwin, who are putting these little teasers out, like the funny backstage photos and stuff of them as they, as the third episode gets ready to... to they release their poster. Yeah. But uh, Michelle Sprecht, who plays um, Dr. Um, McKenna. Yeah, thank you. McKenna, she's really awesome in posting stuff uh, of her, like, you know, flubbing lines and having fun and it, it god bless them and, and horizon put out something new i saw yeah um their their kickstarters are in in the final final moments um oh so, uh, speaking of, of kickstarters phase two they launched their their first one i saw oh, did they? that yeah yes. i saw that today and i i should have said something sorry james well this is our chance <laughs> <laughs> it's true uh, star trek phase two and um has has posted a new kickstarter for um, post production, like. yeah. yeah. Post production on let's see, nice. it's for the for two episodes, and then uh, there there's um, they, they just moved into a new uh, facility that they're trying to get ready. So um, the, uh, the the extended goals, or I forget. Excuse me, it's early, uh, but the the. The subsequent goals are to kind of help finish uh, getting that ready for filming. And then finally, um, the last stretch goal, that's the word I was looking for, uh, the last stretch goal is like rent for a year for this facility. So um, they're talking a lot of money for the last stretch goal. So if you want to help out, they, they've been around the longest. They've proven that they, they can deliver. That's true. So, <laughs> so if, if, if there's one thing that we do know, it's that James really, James really is the, I, I would say probably one of the pioneers of long lasting Trek fan productions. Mm-hmm. So uh, support them if you can uh, share, share their, their Kickstarter. Let's 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 help it be successful. Renegades is sneak peeking at STLV. I thought the only fan production. Mm, we'll see. Mm. My eyebrow goes up on that one. Sometime. Yeah. So um. 
<laughs> it, that comes from our own conversations. <laughs> There's going to be some interesting. That's going to be interesting. So, um, any announcements before we tie up the day? Oh, Mike. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, all the iTunes, all the RSS feed issues have been resolved. Yeah. Better be knocking um, on wood. I've, uh, I want to thank uh, one of our listeners. Uh, I believe his name is Charles. Forgive me if, it, if, it, if I get it all mixed up. It's in my email somewhere, and it's not readily handy. Uh, but um, thank you so much for, for, for your help. You helped me. Identif- I was able to identify what was causing the, the issue, uh, resolved it, and almost immediately I started getting tweets and, and messages saying, I do this working! Yay! And so, thank you to thank all you. of those who were patient enough to uh, to deal with our little tech issues on that. We're yes. glad we were able to get it resolved. Um, oh, don't forget, on Wednesday, May 28th, Book Club, we'll be discussing the first book in the Time 2 series. So if you've read it or if you'd like to read it, you still have some time. You still have plenty of time to read it before then. And you'd like to join us to talk about the book um, while we record it, that would be awesome. We will be recording, I think it's 7 p.m. PM my time so 6 p.m. Pacific 6 Pacific 9 Eastern right and um, feel free come join us talk about the book the it's going to be fun yeah it's going to be I feel sorry for Steve I do too hey for our too. audience Terry and Mike yes next weekend is uh, Memorial Day weekend are we having a show do you have plans are you going to be gone my dear I will be at the Northern Studio you'll be at the Northern Studio I don't believe we have plans so pay attention to the GNT show site everyone just to make sure I, I, I don't want to say yay and then find out that we have plans that I wasn't aware of. So. Oh, I'm game. I'm just saying. <laughs> cool. But, yeah, but Mike, you live in the studio, so. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you're, like, you're like Norm from Cheers. <laughs> you know, you have your own key. And That's a good thing. We love Mike, Mike walks in the studio. I'm always at the bar. Sorry. Sorry. What's yeah. going on? Sorry. Let's talk about what's going in. Sorry. You know? Um. <laughs> And I think that's pretty much it for um, big announcements. Of course, don't forget to support our friends over at, like, Lanny, who's still requesting that we support her GoFundMe uh, site for her transition. We love her very much, and we want to be able to help her. So the link for that can always be found at the GNT Show site. And um, we got a couple of others. Don't forget, you guys, we have the most amazing bands that help support our music. We, we went out of our way to make sure that we do not use music in our edited version of our shows that we don't have permission to use. And as such, we have written permission from like Grethor and Five Year Mission and just um, Warp 11, just some great, and even the um, the Starfleet, uh, the, the soft jazz stuff of the Starfleet. Andrew Allen. Love Andrew. And so don't forget to support them as well. If there's something, we're still trying to get Enterprise Blues Band to respond to us. They've, they, <laughs> I don't Contact think it. they'd say no, I shirt. just think that getting so I'm I, my goal is at the convention this year is to nail Vaughn Armstrong down. Terry, get say, get Amy Shimmerman to, to, to get involved. We'll get an answer. Yeah. Well we're gonna get She's an answer pitbull. to get Enterprise Blues Band to, so we can use their music as well. And uh but don't forget to support them. the links are always available on the right hand side of our page. You can go ahead, click on their links and get their music because they do fun, fun stuff. So there. All right. I think that's done. Have a good day, everybody. Uh uh, we'll catch you next, probably next week for episode 144. I'm Terry Lynn. Yeah. Bye. Kapla! Joel and True. Fucking Romulan now. Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp 11, Grethor, Five Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation. GNT show is a busy little beaver production. I'm gonna take a five year tour. Only go where no man's gone before I'm gonna travel to the end And make new friends Move ahead, walk back to ten Put a mini skirt on my old man Represent the human race
Zero G.